On this episode of Canine Corner, keep an eye out for Canine Cupid since Valentine's Day is almost here. We'll be talking about ways to celebrate the holiday with your pup. Plus, we'll learn about a local organization helping animals. And we'll introduce you to this adorable little guy who's looking for a forever home. All this coming up right now on Canine Corner. Tanich, your host for Canine Corner, the show that your dog will give two paws up. Love is in the air here on Canine Corner because Valentine's Day is right around the corner. My co-host Popeye Tanich will be helping me share some ways to spend Valentine's Day with your canine companion. And we'll learn about the Rock and Pets Foundation, a local organization that's helping animals. But first, let's meet adorable rescue dogs from Kenmar Rescue. So Marty, I know that we always film at the park together, but I thought this time that we would invite you here to the City Cable offices, so welcome. Thanks a lot, it's great to be here. It's nice and cozy, and I've got my little friend here, and her name is Molly, and Molly wants to talk about it too. Look at her, she's all into the microphone. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about Kenmar. Thank you. So we've been around for about 11 years, and we're a small dog rescue, and we've saved uh, over 800 animals to date. Yeah, it's really great. And so we have a couple of cuties that we'd like to tell you a little bit more about. So this is Molly. She's two years old. We think she's a Yorkie blend. Very, very soft and silky. She gets along with other dogs. As you can see, she loves to be on the lap. Very great companion. Tiny tot. Full grown. She's all of seven pounds. And she's microchipped, she's got all of her shots, and she's ready to go to her forever home. The best type of home would be, I would say, you know, older kids that are gentle with dogs, um, even like other gentle dogs as well. Um, she would be just as happy living in a home with a big backyard as she would be in a condo with no yard, as long as the person who, or family that adopts her, takes her on her walks and, you know, makes her part of their family. We also have a little guy named Downey. He is a Heinz 57. We think he's a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel and also Corgi and also possibly Papillon. So he is a little log. He's about 18 pounds, but he's lovable. He is fixed up to date with all of his shots. He's microchipped and his perfect family would be a family that likes to cuddle with him and take him on walks, but mostly just love on him and share you know, some playtime with him and have him be, you know, a new member. We think he's about three years old and um, he's full grown at 18 pounds, so he's not gonna get any bigger. Um, maybe he could lose a little bit of weight, <laughs> but couldn't we all? <laughs> so I think Downey's gonna be a perfect addition to any family. If you're interested in adopting or fostering one of Kenmar Rescue's dogs, please visit KenmarRescue.org. Now, does your Valentine have four legs and is covered in fur? Well, if so, then we have you covered. My co-host Popeye Tertanich, or Canine Cupid, is here to help me share some ways to spend the holiday with your dog. Valentine's Day isn't all flowers and chocolate. Did you know that pet owners spent $751 million on their pets last year for Valentine's Day, according to the National Retail Federation? Now, that number might seem pretty crazy, but it actually boils down to a little bit more than $5 a person. And to put things in perspective, Americans spent in total $19.6 billion on Valentine's Day last year. So it's no surprise that February 14th is a big deal to pet owners, as it should be. The holiday is about showing your loved ones how much you care after all, and your canine companion is no exception. Now what says Valentine's Day more than a handmade Valentine's card? Nothing! And it's a super sweet thing to do with your dog. You can give it to family and friends, you can give it to your dog's BFF, you can keep it for yourself and hang it up on your refrigerator or hang it up on your desk at work. So Popeye and I are going to show you how to make a Valentine's Day card with your dog. A few things you'll need, some construction paper, your dog of course, some non-toxic ink pads in festive Valentine's Day colors, of course. Maybe some doilies, 
a Sharpie if you want to sign it for your dog, and of course some glue. And just have doilies, all different ones. Now full disclosure, you might have to do most of the work here. Your dog might not want to take the reins on this craft. But it's still fun and it's still really great quality time with your canine companion. So here I have some glue. No, 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 not a treat. Not a Valentine's snack, Popeye. Definitely keep your dog away from the glue. And I'm just gonna glue it on there. Luckily this glue dries clear so we can't see my terrible crafting skills. And I'm just gonna layer a couple hearts here. Again, you can be as much or as little creative as you would like to be. Oh, I think, uh-oh, Popeye, I think we got some museum-worthy Valentine here. So far, so good. Now, I think that's enough doilies. Now I'm gonna take, and I think I'm gonna use the black ink pad just to make sure that Popeye's paw print shows up quite a bit. You can, of course, test and see what, what shows up the most. Popeye is a southpaw, like me. And you just kind of dip your dog's paw pad into the ink. And we are just going to want to stamp his paw. You want to press down kind of firmly. Of course, if your dog reacts or doesn't like, you know, his or her paws being touched, and obviously don't do this, but Popeye is very okay with it. And there you have it. We have his paw print. So we'll just write love Popeye. And there you go. You have a really cute little Valentine for your dog. Of course, normally I would let the glue dry. And you might want to let the glue dry before you put your dog's paw print on it. We could even put it in a little envelope here. You could even stuff it with some candy for whoever you're giving it to and make it into just a really, really cute gift. You can mail it to if somebody doesn't live in the area. And it's just a really sweet thing to get. And there you go. So let's talk about gifts because who does not love a gift on Valentine's Day? And your dog is no exception. Now you can take your dog to the pet store and let him or her pick out his own gift. As you can see, Popeye loves his rose. He loves it so much that he's actually laying on top of it. But you can also make your gift for your dog a surprise. You can order them a box online. Bark Shop has a great Valentine's Day themed one and let it arrive in the mail and let your dog open it on his or her own. And plus it will make them feel totally bad for always barking at the delivery man. Now, another fun idea for you and your pup for Valentine's Day is to take some festive photos together. If your dog likes dressing up, like this guy does, then you can wear a matching outfit with your canine companion and take a couple selfies. If your dog does not like dressing up, then maybe some festive bandanas would be a good option. Popeye has this beautiful one with hearts and XOXO as well. You can just tie one on your dog or you can, you know, have your matching outfits on and take a couple photos together. <gasps> Hi! Oh, you look good, Popeye. Now, if you or your dog aren't too embarrassed, you can even post these on the Petco Heads and Tails app. You just submit the photo, and if you get a certain number of likes, you're actually eligible to get a gift card to Petco or for Petco to make a donation to the Petco Foundation on your pet's behalf. Now, the way to anyone's heart, and especially your dog's heart, is through their stomach. So let's talk about a few ways you can celebrate Valentine's Day with food. You can treat your dog to dinner at a dog-friendly restaurant. Lazy Dog here in Torrance is a fantastic option. They even have a menu just for dogs and the food on it looks really good. If you prefer to stay home and you and your dog are more the homebody type, that's totally okay too. You can have a really nice night at home. 
You can make your dog his favorite meal. Popeye loves his Bowser beer, Popeye's Pilsner, so I like to pour him a glass of that. And I even got Popeye for Valentine's Day his very own pizza from Paws Pizzeria. Oh, that got your attention. So we just like to kick back. Wow. I don't think you're going to share this one with me either. Just kick back and give your dog, you know, just a nice relaxing night at home. You can, you know, have a nice meal for yourself too. I don't think he's going to share this one with me. So a perfect way to wind down and just, you know, spend the rest of Valentine's Day with your dog is to have a little relaxation time. I have Popeye's Noble Pet Company Aromatherapy Calming Spray here. Just gonna spritz a little in the air. Oh, I see that nose going, I think he likes it. Just to help, you know, him calm down a little and just kinda unwind from all that pizza eating. And I also have his Noble Paws from Noble Pet Company. It is his paw balm. And who does not love a paw massage? Popeye, are you going to give me a hand massage after? I don't think so. So we just take a little bit and just rub it on his paws and it just has really nice oils and helps make his paws nice and soft, especially this time of year when the weather is so difficult for people as well as dogs. Oh, we like that, huh? <laughs> now, another thing that you can do is to read a book with your dog or you can even, you know, watch a movie too and just kind of relax on the couch. But Popeye and I each have a book here. I have How to Speak Dog, and Popeye has Popeye and Kaya's Petlandia Road Trip. It's a story about Popeye and his very best friend going out on a road trip. I'll read it to him, and then I will read a little bit about how to understand Popeye better. If you give any of these ideas a try, reach out on social media and let us know. You can tag us using hashtag CanineCupid. Did Popeye actually agree to be my Valentine? He sends such mixed messages. One thing is for sure though, he loved all that attention. We're gonna take a short break, but don't go anywhere. There's much more festive doggone fun when we come back. Welcome back to Canine Corner. I'm your host, Rhiannon Trutanich. The Rock and Pets Foundation is a local group that helps animals. Let's learn more about the organization and the work they're doing. For Fina and her foundation, it's all about helping animals. Rock and Pets Foundation is a nonprofit based in the South Bay, and we help out animals in need, whether they're domesticated, feral, or stray. Rock and Pets Foundation president Fina's love for animals started long before she started the organization. I've always, always, always loved animals since I was, I think, pretty much born. There's pictures of me very little surrounded by animals, so I always knew I wanted to do something with animals. I didn't specifically know, you know, I wanted to create a foundation, a nonprofit. It just kind of happened. But I, I've always known I want to help animals in some capacity. And her inspiration for starting the foundation is very close to her heart. We got started because I used to have a cat, Anastasia, and he was my baby. He's no longer here. And after he passed, uh, I wanted to help other animals. So he was the inspiration behind it. And we got started uh, June 2013 and our nonprofit status August 2014. 
The Rock and Pets Foundation helps animals in many ways, including helping animals get spayed and neutered. TNR, trap, neuter, return. That's the most humane way to manage a community cat colony. You trap them, you get them fixed and vaccinated, and you release them so they don't keep having litters. So we go out to different areas all throughout LA and we do that. In addition to their work with cat colonies, the Rock and Pets Foundation also helps homeless people care for their animals. There's a lot of homeless encampments all throughout the South Bay and LA people are familiar with Skid Row, South Central. There's a lot of homeless groups and encampments there too. And a lot of those people have pets. So we support that because they're keeping their animals out of shelters, which at the moment, unfortunately, they're not all not kill. They will be one day, but they're not yet. So we'd like to help them out. We bring them food, bedding, toys, harnesses, leashes, bowls, whatever they need. Rock and Pets Foundation also works with other organizations in the area. There are several churches and community groups that help the homeless, so we provide food for them. They give the homeless people food and we give them pet food for their pets. And for FINA, knowing the work the Rock and Pets Foundation does is helping animals is what's important. The most rewarding part is knowing that we are making a difference. In the long run, we are saving and helping so many lives. So it's, it, it pays off. Rock and Pets Foundation holds fundraisers during the year, including one during the holidays and one coming up for Valentine's Day at Camp Runamut, South Bay. Bingo under the hearts. That's so cute. <laughs> and it's a game night, bingo bash, uh, fundraiser for Rock and Pets Foundation. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna be playing bingo. There's gonna be food trucks there, uh, vendors, uh, raffle prizes, and just, a lot of fun. You'll be raising money and supporting animals that need it. If you would like more information about the Rock and Pets Foundation or would like to donate, please visit rockandpetsfoundation.org. You can also find them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you plan on attending the Bingo Under the Hearts event, just know it's people friendly only. But that's okay. Leave Fido at home, maybe win a raffle prize to bring home to your pup and support a great cause. You can check the Rock and Pets Foundation social media pages for more information. Why is it important for pet owners to spay and neuter their animals? By spaying and neutering your cats and dogs, in the long run, you're gonna save countless lives. Um, I mean, a cat alone is pregnant nine weeks approximately, and they could have several litters a year. So if you do the math, it's like a pyramid. Sometimes people say, I, I want my animal to have one litter at least. And I no, you could, if you really want a puppy or a kitten, they will always be available in shelters. So it's best to get them spayed and neutered uh, as soon as they're ready. What is the process for trap, neuter, return? For TNRing, uh, what we do is we go out the evening, the night before, set up traps and wait never leave a trap unattended and once the cat we get a cat in the trap throw a towel over it immediately it calms them down and we bring them home with us let them relax overnight and early morning the next day we have to drop them off at a clinic or vet they get fixed and vaccinated we pick them up in the afternoon and they heal overnight Usually one night, depending on the circumstances, it might take longer. And then we bring them back to their colony when they're ready. What does the Rock and Pets Foundation do when visiting homeless encampments? And we bring them food and some fleece bedding, toys, collars, and just walk through. We take pictures of everything as well. So we have lots of pictures on our website of people with their animals and we we ask if they're fixed or vaccinated we just came across an RV that had uh, four kittens and two cats that were not so we will get them done very soon so that's amazing so you guys then help them if their animals oh, yeah. aren't vaccinated or um, spayed or neutered yes. yet 
that's how we, I mean, we don't go there with that intention, but if we see it, definitely we'll step in. How can people get involved and help the Rock and Pets Foundation? There are so many ways <laughs> I want to let people know. Sometimes people think they, they can't help out or they can't volunteer, and there's a million ways you can. Um, you could, obviously the first way is to adopt a shelter animal. If you can't do that, you could foster from a rescue group. Can't do that, you could somehow help with networking or promoting, fundraising, grant writing, or just doing what people normally do, like shopping. If anyone shops at Ralph's or Food for Less, Kroger, we have uh, kind of like an account with them. We're affiliated if they register online and choose us as their charity of choice. We get a portion of their um, a portion of their purchases. That's fantastic. And the same thing for online shopping. Uh, if they go to Good Shop, which is a online store, they have 5,000 partner stores. They should go through their link and choose us as their charity. We'll get a portion. And all this information is on our donate page. There's many other similar ways that people could help. We take in mail order if they want to send a check or PayPal. And we also have wish lists through Amazon, Target, Walmart, if people want to send direct uh, products. <laughs> That's great. If you would like more information about the Rock and Pets Foundation or would like to donate, please visit rockandpetsfoundation.org. You can also find them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you have a question, contact us and we'll be sure to get you the right answer. Call us at 310-618-5762 or email us at caninecorner at torrentca.gov. Now, if you missed the adoption segment at the beginning of our show, or if you just want to see the adorable dogs again, here's your recap. Molly is a Yorkie mix. She is two years old. She is seven pounds and is full grown. She's microchipped and up to date on all of her shots. She's a very sweet dog and would love to just hang out at home with her humans. She would be best in a home with older children. She would be the best companion. Downey is a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, Corgi, and Papillon mix. He is three years old. He weighs 18 pounds and is full grown. He's up to date on all of his shots and is microchipped. He loves playtime, going on walks, and just hanging out at home. He's a very sweet dog and would love to have a forever home to call his own. If you're interested in adopting or fostering one of Kenmar Rescue's dogs, please visit KenmarRescue.org. If you want even more Canine Corner or just want to say hello or share a photo of your very own Canine Cupid with us, we always love to hear from you. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. That's all the time we have today. Thanks for joining us here on Canine Corner. I'm Rhiannon Chertanich, and we'll see you next time.